Yes, I'm recording, Trevor. Okay, so welcome to the March Trade the Fifth webinar. We're going to talk about uh, the black box breakout indicator today. We've got the new version out the, uh, for Think or Swim only at the moment. Um, I can see myself, I can see my bald patch. You know, I'm 50 years old nearly. No, no hair. Um, so we're going to talk about the black box breakout in this game, the new version for Think or Swim, some of the changes uh, and how to set up the scanner. We've had some questions about that as well. So we are going to do that today. Um, so let's get started. We're live in the Facebook group. So if you're in the Facebook group watching, you can ask questions by placing a comment. If you are in the webinar room itself, use the chat box here. Click on all panelists and attendees so people can see what you're asking. And then we'll get going, I think. So welcome, everybody. So those that came an hour early, again, last apologies. Uh, we haven't changed our clocks in Europe, so when I did program all this out, um, I got I got the times wrong. Uh, yes, it does, Trevor, for Think or Swim, yeah. Okay, so I want to talk about the new changes first. So I'm just going to go on to Microsoft. I'm going to go on to the five minutes here. Okay, so I'm just going to... Take all this off a second, remove. In fact, I think it was a three minute from earlier. Yeah. Okay, so the changes that we have. We put a, a, an extra filtration system on, on the black box breakout indicator now. So you will only find signals that come from the cloud. Rather than getting a signal up here when you don't know it's going to end, end and you've got nothing to give you a reference to, what we're doing is we, we've refined that filter filtration system to give us those signals coming out. Now, this is an example on, uh, on Microsoft here on the three minutes. You still got the bubbles, which are you can switch off, but then you've got target zones at 50% times risk, 100 with the orange dashed lines, 160 in the uh, purple, and 200% profit times risk. There, you see Microsoft just went for it, hell for leather today. Um, so again, these are some of the changes. So. We need. We still need the criteria with the squeeze, uh, the, the squeezing price action, but the increased volume with uh, the candle. Uh, so you know whether it's long or short. Uh, but then we need that um, to happen in or around the cloud. Okay, uh, within a certain percent. Then we get the signal. So they're the signals that are hot to trot. Really, um, whether it's long or short. They're the signals. You see, yes, you see there. Uh, yesterday, the stock was still in the cloud. The squeeze is the contraction in price action, Trevor. So the 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 whole range of the candle has to be smaller than or equal to the previous twenty candles. So you're squeezing in price action. So, in other words, the range of the candle is quite small but you're increasing with volume, so it's like you're ready to burst, yeah? So you, you've got that very little movement in price action, but you are ready to burst. And I will give you an example of that on oil today. We looked at oil earlier um, for somebody. So let's just make that big. Let's go to my flexible grid. And we looked at oil on the three minute, I think it was. And this, I think this is a good example, actually, of what I mean. So let me just go big here. So as you can see here, we've got some quite big red candles, okay? But then these candles that come in here are smaller than or equal to the average of this previous 20. 
So we've got the increased volume because the candle's red. So the candles that are down candles that are lower volume are cyan. They're no good to us. What we're looking for is that increased volume with smaller price action ready to burst. So this was oil today. The first signal from oil came out here. So we came down below the cloud. We came to test. We came down. And then we came back up again. But we got a signal here. 57.13. There was the entry. Now that you said, remember, this new filter only gives us the signals um, that are um, coming from the cloud. So we can see this first signal here. If we didn't get the first one, we got a second signal here. Uh, 57.10 was the entry. And you can see with each one, we've got the 50%, the 100, the 160, the 200. So both of those signals made 200% profit times risk there. On, uh, on oil. So that does that make sense? Yeah, Trevor, the squeeze is a smaller candle, but with increased, increased volume. Yeah, that's right. So again, we can see it more on the five minutes here. You see how small that candle is there? Okay, compared to all of these previous candles, and that, that was increased volume. And that's what we're looking for. So let me just take this futures chart off a second. We go back to stocks because they're easier to look at. Uh, that's five minutes. Sorry, we've got, it. we've got a signal come off on five minute on square and it's in. Okay, this trade is in. We talked about this earlier. We set it up earlier. Uh, does that mean shop is in as well? No, just square. Okay, um, so what we have is again, we've got a lot of toggle switches in there. So this filter for the cloud, we can switch it on and off. Okay, we can switch it on and off. So if we go into the beaker settings here to the black box breakout indication for version 4B, um, we can see here, we can enable the bubble prices or take them off. So I'll take the bubble prices off for now. We can stop the stop cloud filter. Okay, this is the, the one that filters out the really, really good looking trades. We can switch that off as well. Okay, and we can also switch the audible alert off. Okay, this trigger alert here is an audible alert. So if you've got the chart open and all you do is trade oil every single day, um, you can have that alert on and it will tell you, make a noise when there's a signal. Okay, so let's just leave the alert on. Let's take those two filters off for the cloud uh, and then show you what I mean. Let's go back. Okay, so. So here, for example, this signal here does not appear with the filter on because the stop is nowhere near the cloud, okay? And as you can see here, we're going into some big, this is, it did work. Uh, the higher probability of ones are the ones in the cloud. So if we just want to filter those and it comes as default, uh, we can, enable the, we can enable the stop cloud filter. So now we have that there. This is the original signal that we've got on at the moment that's triggered at 32. Now, at the moment, we only these only go for five bars. You see the five dots? This is why I've drawn this on, because I, it, things are not moving as fast at the moment. So I, I draw these on with my stop and entry so I can see. You can see on the dot cloud at the bottom as well, we're all green. We come back, slightly test the cloud on the five minute, and then we go all green again. Really, really strong bullish. And the whole point of the dot cloud is, so you can see what's happening on the five, the 10, the 15, the 20, and the 30, okay? Or the five, the 15, the 20, the 30, whatever you want to do. But when you're day trading, you've got to look for 
this bottom time frame to be 30 minutes, no more. You need to know what's going off there. One minute is a small time frame, but we can have a look, okay? It's a scalper's time frame. Um, it's not something I would advise to use with the black box breakout indicator, but we can see how it performed on oil, okay? Let's look at this as an example, because you've got to be quick into these trades, okay? So let's look at today as an example. Okay, so on the one minute here, this candle closed and within 60 seconds, it triggered this one, okay? And that was a big win. But you've got to be quick, Taya, okay? With the black box breakout indicator. So this is why I'm saying one minute, it does work, but you've got to be very quick. So if you're only trading oil, and you've got your trade ticket ready and you know what the size of your trade is going to be, as soon as you get that signal in 57.085 or 57.089, you can put your order on, okay? And again, with that coming through there, that was a big move. This one didn't trigger. Short here triggered 160%, okay? Uh, what did this one? Short, this short triggered, failed. This short did not trigger. This short triggered, uh, didn't take out the stop, and then came down for a monster trade. Uh, this short triggered and was still in, okay? And then there's another short trigger on oil right now, uh, which is a good entry because it's below this pivot at 56.89. The only problem is for me right now, it's broken the stop for the order so you don't go in, okay? So if you're only trading oil, and you're only going to trade off the one or the two minute. For me, I like to look at multiple time frames so I can see what's going off. Personally, two minutes is enough for me. Okay. And I've got the three minutes down on the bottom right. I've got the five minutes here. With the five minutes, I've got my Elliott wave count on because that five minutes is really good uh, during the day to understand where you are on the, on the Elliott wave count. I've got my two minutes for really quick signals. You see the two minute here is still good. 57.02 stop, 56.86 entry. That two minute signal is still good. You can see how we're contracting in that range now and we're looking to break out to the downside. My only issue is here, when you're using the black box breakout indicator guys, you've got to look at previous support and resistance and this is the open and yesterday's close here for oil. Look how it reacted there very recently. Are you really going to enter a trade right here, right now, and just take 50%? That, that's the decision you need to be you need to be saying to yourself, am I going to go into this trade right now? Okay? This is the reason. That has found support here very recently. Am I going to go in there again? Uh, and then when we look at ES, another example for futures. How did that, um, I put that in earlier, we were talking about it, Jerry. Uh, oh, it's just broken. Um, I wouldn't trade ES today, it's just grinding up. Uh, broken the stop for that order. As they see, looks pretty negative. Look at all this low volume on the three minute here. All these gray and cyan candles here, low volume, it's not good. So yeah, with futures, you can trade off the one minute, but you've just got to be quick and concentrating. And you've got to be in and out right quick because it could move really quickly. It depends on how many contracts you're trading. Uh, it just, you know, it's a lot of stress. Spot, three minute order. We've already got this on, I think. Or have we? That's come from below the cloud. So we've got the trick, we've got an entry. But again, guys, I'm just going to concentrate on this black box breakout indicator today because you, you've got to understand 
our key time frame at the bottom is bullish, but what have we been doing today? Okay, we keep making these lower resistance levels. We got this um, entry here for long when it came back up through the cloud, it failed. Okay, it keeps failing at the cloud. Now we're up and above the cloud, you've got to say to yourself, where's my entry for this? If I went 145.70, I've got resistance, a failure here, failure here, and a failure here. This is a low probability trade. It could go, it really could go, but we have to be careful with this. Um, we've got to think how it's performed during the day and whether to walk away. We're late on in the session as well, do we really want to go there? For me, look, for me, I look at the five minute now. If this can, I mean, we just had a big trade going down here. If this can hold resistance again, it's just shut up, typical. Um, we, we could look for another trade. Sorry, I've got the big monitor here, so I'm just keeping an eye on a few things. Uh, yeah, we cancelled VZ, didn't we, Mark? Yeah, okay. Uh, Netflix long, five minute, what we got here. Again, we've come from below the cloud. Go to the five minute here. We are all green. NQ's pulled back, found support at the cloud. We've got a big rejection here. We've got resistance at the 50% line, the, the, the cyan dots here. Makes it a very difficult trade. NVDA, three minutes. I might like that one actually. Let me look. We've had a winning trade on NVDA today. Just seem to want to go one way. Mark, I like this one a lot. We had this move and we had a winner. I think we've got another 100% to the recent high. Can we put this out, Mark, please? Thank you. 163.51 entry, 163.07 stop. It may fail before you even get it ready. Um, but if NQ finds support here right now, is, this could be a good little trade. Uh, sorry, Trevor. Uh, no, you have to wait for it to fail, Trevor. Uh, again, this is just an EMA cloud. I say just. It's pretty, pretty cool what it does. Um, but you just have to wait for it to find support like this is here. Uh, we haven't broken the stop. The main thing is when you're trading this strategy, if it breaks the stop before the entry, you cancel the order, okay? This is why on the day trading uh, membership, some of those guys in here on there, um, you'll, you'll see us all the time, cancel this, cancel this order, cancel this order, because we set it up, you've got to be ready, if it breaks the stop for the order, which is 163.07 here, if it breaks the stop, you cancel the order. You don't just, you know, so you're waiting, but you've got to have the order ready and on because it could just shoot up through there. So we've got 107 there. We're rejecting at the cloud so far. This rejection on this first signal here is prime, okay? We rejected the lows on high volume. Hammerhead candle, big, but we need that continuation to follow on. That next candle did not follow on. That's the problem with this trade right now. But we, we know we've got this line here, the 07. Okay, we've got an entry at 51. It's still good unless it breaks the stop. So I'm just going to put my risk reward on there. There we go, coming down to test the stop. So 51 we said. You can see here, these are the risk rewards, 50, 100, 160, 200, okay? Holding at the cloud quite well at the moment where you're rejecting the lows 
All we need is a big volume burst up and that will break into this trade. Got a signal on Baba Mark. Similar sort of thing. We've moved higher. We've come to test the cloud. It looks good, Mark. You can get this one out as well. Did you get out the... Um, I'm not seeing it on TweetDeck. I'm wondering if it's not working on my Mac. <laughs> right, yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah, can you put Baba out as well? Again, very, very nice rejection on high volume here, which give us the trigger at the cloud. We just need to follow on. But we're day trading. Remember, the blue candle and the grey candles are lower volume. Trevor, if I just put the volume on there, you will see. So 84 and a 23 entry. Yeah, it's important for those setups on the high volume. So what I'm going to do is just going to switch on the volume uh, for equities here so you can see. Okay. Uh, let me just adjust that slightly. So we talk. I talk about this in um, the uh, the core trading strategy. I talk about. Um, Yes, there's a, there's, it's being recorded, uh, Winfield, yeah. So the idea with this is we can see um, we need that increased volume. So this green candle here, we can see it was more volume than the previous candle. It's called an accumulation candle, okay? And I cover this in my core training strategy, training course, okay? These are important, accumulation and distribution. Very, very important. We've got the squeeze up. We've got rejection here on higher volume than the previous gray candle. That's why we get the signal, okay? Now the signal then is ready. It's ready to go. Are we ready to go yet on this? I don't know. But if we then get increased volume again and push out of that cloud, we've got a good chance it's going to go higher, okay? So the idea is that we, we've started to increase volume. So, so to the upside, we've got that accumulation candle. So we've got a higher high, we've got increased volume from the previous candle, so the, the momentum is up, okay? Uh, and then what you'd like to see is something like this here. You see how the volume increases every time? Boom, 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 there, okay? So we've got increased volume here. We've got that accumulation moving away. Then we get this low volume doji, it's a sign, it's over, potentially, okay? Then we get increased volume to the downside. If you're not out already, you've got to get out, okay? This is why I've included the volume on the candles. It's a lot easier to read than looking down here, okay? Let me just, uh, equities, volume, let me just, Get rid of that a second. So all I'm doing now on this Baba, for example, is we've come down to test the cloud, okay? We've got that increased volume, and now we've got the order. It's simple as that. MBDA, we've set that up, okay? Since our big higher volume rejection in the cloud, we've low volume. Cyan, closed, lower than the open. Indecision, gray doji. Gray doji forming right now. So we've got indecision and it's slightly a bullish candle. So all this low volume again, we're waiting for the move back up again. On spot, I think we're in on spot, aren't we? Yeah, so on Spotify, we're in, okay. 
which time frame are we on? I can't remember. Uh, but with spot here, you see we've got the increased volume, we've got the signal, and then we break out. Tip the 100% line, okay? So you can see, I think we're on the five minute with spot, to be honest. Yeah, we are. I don't know what they, uh, no, it's not, it's SQ, tell a lie. Sorry. <laughs> yeah, that'll be the one. NQ did find support of the cloud, so has RTY, that's good. So again, we've got lots of potential here with this. We've got this first rejection didn't give us a signal. Then we got this, this is the signal that we took on and put off. The entry was above this pivot point here, stop loss here, and then we went sideways. We've got another signal. It really wants to push out of this cloud, and then we finally do. Now we've gone flat again around this resistance level. We're waiting for another push, and it should go higher. Baba, remember, we've got the order on. It's not filled yet. NVDA, we've got the order on. It's not filled yet. And the same with shop. Okay, we've got the order on, but it's not filled yet. That's going sideways. That's going to come and test the cloud again. Shop is on the three minutes. So what I'm going to do in a minute as well, I'm going to go to a larger time frames as well. So shop, you see here, we got that signal, and then we've gone sideways. So if we do break out of here, it's a good thing. The only problem is the gray dots is the ATR. There we go. We're just starting to increase a bit of volume there on shop. Okay, so what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna switch the charts around now. I'm gonna go for uh, larger time frames using the black box breakout indicator. So let me just move that over there on the way. Let me bring this one down. And then we'll look, and then when we've done that, Trevor, we'll look at setting up your, um, your watch list, okay? Okay, large time frames. So we put an order on earlier on 2.30 minutes, which was, let me scroll back. Spot on the 30. Let's go to the 30 minute time frame. Now, this is the 30 minute time frame. We have got our ATRs here today on there. Okay. So it acts exactly the same. We've had this big move up yesterday. It came through our my resistance zone that I've put on there, okay? Now we pull back to test the cloud. We've got a signal. Now this current 30 minute candle is green. We've got increased volume again. We're starting to move away. We're still within the bounds. It's just closed, okay? We're, we're still within the bounds of our stop and our entry for the signal. So this is a really strong, now it's 30 minutes. If this triggers today, you've got to be prepared to swing it right now. So if we don't trigger in the next half an hour or so, you've got to make those decisions yourselves and say, Do you know what, I'll wait for tomorrow, okay? I'm not going to get in or I'm going to give it a go. So this is the 30 minute time frame here. So on the dot cloud, again, the settings are quite different here. So on my dot cloud, my key time frame could be as much as a weekly. Then this is a daily, four hour, okay? Now, we can change that actually to a day, yeah? Because we've got the hour, the, the, the key time, the, the main time frame here is 30 minutes, because that's the, the chart. Then we've got an hour, okay? Two hours, four hours daily. 
This middle daily, period two, is the gap in the dot cloud here. So you, you just duplicate that one. So I press OK, click Apply. We can see now daily, four hour, two hour, hour, 30 minute, all above the cloud. Very strong looking intraday breakout there. The breakout is above my resistance zone. These resistance zones I take from the daily time frame. So good looking trade on the 30 minute. UMP is another. So again, we've got the signal. Now, we were a bit late for this signal. Let me just take this one off here, remove one. So we've got our stop 165.26 in the bubble there, okay? So we've moved up yesterday, and then yesterday we moved down, we tested the cloud. Today, we've moved higher, we've had a slight pullback. We missed the entry on this because I found it late. Yeah, very tough, it's just ES isn't moving. They think YM, the Dow, is keeping ES down. It's keeping it honest today, that's the problem. So very, very difficult to trade today. We need to be running. So again, what I've done here, I've been sensible. I've used the same stop for the black box breakout indicator. We missed the entry, found it later. So I've gone above the high of that candle, 166.64, okay? If it doesn't trigger today, I will just take it off and we'll re-look at it in the morning. Okay, so let's go even bigger time frames. Okay. Go to daily now. So this is one I set up, set up on my swing trading membership today. Now, what I'm doing is I'm combining our Elliott Wave Indicator Suite and the Black Box Breakout Indicator, okay? So I want an ag aggressive entry for this. We've had a Wave 4 pullback. Let's just go back over those main criteria. The 535 has pulled back between 90 and 140. Tick in a box. The stochastic has a false breakout at the top. Strong bullish trend. It's pulled back against it and crossed over in the oversold zone. Tick in the box. Multiple time frame dot cloud. We're on the daily time frame. My key trend here down the bottom is a weekly. Okay, we did come back on this pullback, but now we've gone all green again on a multiple time frame dot cloud. Let's reduce those down. The wave four has found support in the green zone. Brilliant. We've moved back above, and now yesterday we had increased volume after the gap up. We got that green candle. The candle was smaller, or average two. The previous 20 bars, plus a few of the bits and bobs that we put in our calculations. Now we've got the black box breakout indicator. So I'm confident we've got a potential fifth wave. I want to be more aggressive with my entry. I don't want to wait for it to go through the six ball moving average high. I've got that black box breakout indicator. All I've done as well is put my regression trend channel on. And I'll take that off and show you how I do that. Drawing. Okay, so in here, regression channel, I go from the peak of three, the peak of four, and that gives me my regression trend channel. If I break out of that, that small bearish pullback, that profit taking pullback, in most cases is over. I just like to change that to green on the number one because that's my green means go. Okay, so with my black box breakout indicator, I've confirmed this is a really high probability fifth wave move. I want to be aggressive, so I've got to be outside of my regression trend channel. I've got my black box breakout signal at 174.86, which is way outside of this. We've rejected the lows today. It's not triggered. Fine, we carry the order over tomorrow. That's the daily time frame, and that's how it responds to the breakout signals. We've got another one here, I think it was on uh, TOL, there we go, again. So with TOL, we go through the same process. 
And again, all of these signals come through that stocks uh, signals membership that we've got, those spreadsheets that you download. So TOL came down. We've had the wave four. Look how the, the oscillators crown between 90 and 140. Fantastic. We've got crossover on stochastic against false bar. The multiple time frame dot cloud is coming back to us, but it's not brilliant. Um, but for me, the fifth wave is on. We're through the 6-4 moving average high already, or well, we've tried it today. Yesterday's signal, look at that candle there. Almost a solid candle. Again, but the range of it is calculated, and it gave us the signal at 36.80. 35.20 is the stop loss, and we've got a good breakout signal. We've got the higher high, higher low on lower volume today but it's a great looking signal. Okay, quick drink. Okay, the top square mean, it's just an indication to show, this is a four hour, for example. It's just an indication, Michael, that all four of these, because it's a square, four sides, are green. If the top three are green, you will get a triangle. If the top three are red, you'll get a red triangle. If you get a top, if your top four are red, you'll get a red square. So basically, at a quick glance, you can see this is strong bullish because you've got the green square. If you've got a bearish, uh, let's have a look at bears. What we've got here? Uh, I think PRGO is a potential short, let's have a look on that. Um, okay, so here we go. So now PRGO, we've got a potential fifth wave short here. Look at the multiple time frame dot cloud. Okay, we're all red. We've just pulled back in the cloud here. Okay, that's why this time frame for the daily has gone cyan because it's in the cloud. The anchor trend is the bottom. Yes, that's right, Jerry. Yes, so thank you. The anchor trend is the weekly here at the bottom. Okay, and then we've got all everything. That's why the square is there in red for sure. Does that make sense, Michael? Yeah, on the dot cloud. I mean, for me personally, now I whether I'm trading Elliott Wave or the black box, I've got both on, um, on, my, um, on my charts, okay? Because combined, we can get some really great looking trades. And I, the examples I showed you there were pretty hot to trot because we've got a good potential fifth wave move, but we've got that breakout potentially there as well. And that doesn't matter whether it's the hourly or, you know, the four hourly or whatever. What I want to do now is I just want to go through the watch list. Okay. Let me just bring that down. So Trevor, whatever watch list you've got, and I can open another watch list here for the Dow, for example. Okay. Let's go watch lists. Do -do -do. And and I'm going to go public. Okay, let's just get rid of that one. Right, so at this moment in time, I've got a, a public watch list. It could be one you've made up already. Now, you've got the script and you've done that, and that's in the video. So I'm not going to show how people how to do that now because I'm not going to show the script, because some people attending here will not have that uh, black box breakout indicator, and we're not going to share that. But the thing is here, in here, I want to get on this customized tab, this little gear here. So once I've done that, I want to get rid of everything except for the symbol. Okay, remove. And then when I've made my different time frame scripts, and again, it's in the video how to do it. I want to add them there. So I want to, I want the three minutes, press control, keep it down, five, 
15, six, uh, 30, 60, 240, and my daily. Okay, I'm going to add all of those. I'm just going to move them around because they're all out of order. 240, daily, 60, 30, 15. So once I've got all of those in, I press OK. Uh, it takes a little bit of time to calculate, uh, but there's all the signals, okay? There we go. So we can see GS has got a, a, a potential long signal on the 60 minute time frame. okay? Uh, we've got a potential breakout to the upside on the daily for Disney. So let's have a look at that. Let me just move that out of the way, bring the daily time frame up. Okay, these two, these obviously are connected. So I'm going to go to Disney. Where are we? Daily. Just need to link the watch list and then go. Okay. Uh, it's already in. It's already in. That trade's already in. So this was the breakout on Disney. We're at 50, we tipped the 50% profit today. So this is, oh, this is a really good uh, setup, guys. Uh, I want to talk through this again. You'll learn more if you turn my core trading strategy because this is a lone star, okay? We had the gap down. It rejected the lows on high volume. We got the signal. The next day, it gapped up, broke the signal, closed near the high. That is a really morning star, lone star, whatever you want to call it. That is a really good signal. Then today, we've got a slightly higher high. We've tested the lows of yesterday. Decreased volume. We tipped the 50%. Not a bad-looking trade, okay? But the, again, I go a lot in my core trading strategy is about uh, how we recognize these potential types of signals on those wave four pivot points and that sort of thing. I talk about these a lot because it's really, really important. Uh, what else we got on the Dow that's setting up or have gone? Obviously, I'm not watching this list very often. Uh, Goldman Sachs on the 60. Has that already gone? No, that's setting up right now. Okay, that's setting up right now on the 60 Goldman Sachs. You have to wait until the candle closes, remember? Because if we get slightly new highs, these entries and stop losses will change. Until this candle closes, whether it's a one minute, a five minute, 60, or a daily, you've got to wait for the candle.